Hey guys, Sandy here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am playing with a couple of fun products from Brutus Monroe. So this is a stencil. It is called the Butterfly Flower Stencil. So I'm going to be playing with this. I also have some silver chroma glaze. And I pulled out uh, four different colors of paper from the Winter Texture Paper Collection. Now, I also have my photos, which are butterfly photos. So these are taken in a butterfly hut in Epcot. My plan is to make a grid layout. So let's see what I can do. All right, guys. So this is going to be kind of exciting uh, because I don't typically scrapbook with butterflies unless the occasion really calls for it and these photos of the butterflies in the butterfly hut in Epcot down in Walt Disney World definitely definitely call for butterflies so my photos are trimmed down to four by four squares so I went ahead and cut some of these winter texture papers uh, down to four and a half by four and a half inch squares. What that's going to do is give me that nice, thick, colorful border around all of my photos. And I'm going to be doing a grid layout. It's going to be kind of a modified grid layout because it's not going to be a perfect grid. Uh, my design down here in the lower left hand corner is going to be the butterfly. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing with the butterfly yet. All I know is that the butterfly is going to happen. Now I decide that I need to uh, trim down this sheet of black cardstock so that it has a white border uh, all the way around it. I just really felt with the way that the photos were with the borders around there that the layout needed to have a border around it as well. Didn't think it really needed to have a color border. A white border will work great. Uh, and then I could figure out what the heck I was going to be doing with this butterfly. So it was kind of in my head and I just needed to get it out of my head and onto the paper. Sometimes that happens really easily for us, right? Like our ideas are there and they're just coming out and everything, you just see it step by step. And then sometimes you're like, how in the world am I going to make what I see in my head happen with my paper. And this was one of those times where I was like, how in the world am I going to make that happen? Like, what do I need to do to make this happen? So I'm going to go ahead and do the stuff that I know how to do. I know how to glue paper together. So that is what I am going to do. I go ahead and get those down. Now, those butterflies are beautiful right there. Um, while I'm thinking about uh, how I'm going to work the butterfly, I decided to get this mini slim line stencil out. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to stencil a little bit up here as well. So even though I knew how to glue paper down, I pulled that paper right on off of there. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, use some of this glorious, glorious glaze through that stencil. Now, I am trying to be careful, so I'm not going to get a lot of the glaze through the stencil um, so much that it kind of seeps. I don't want seepage in this stencil. Now, some seepage is okay, and that is kind of pretty, but sometimes you really don't want it to seep. Uh, you just want a nice, clear, beautiful stencil with your glaze through it. So I go ahead and pick that up. And then as you can see, I got a little bit right there. So I'm going to rub that off with my finger. And I am completely happy with how this stenciled. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and put my photos back on top of that. And yes, I am putting my photos right on top of that wet glaze. Uh, I'm okay with that. There is a paper barrier between the photo itself and the wet glaze, so it's not like I'm putting my photos directly on it. Uh, and now I'm kind of figuring out in my head what's going to go over here with the butterfly. So again, I'm going to place this stencil down and figure out what exactly I'm doing. So here I am going to put the butterfly off to the side just a little bit. And I am going to very carefully and very smoothly put this glaze over this big open portion of the stencil. I'm going to peel it up. 
voila! And there is my butterfly wing. I am super excited. So this is what it looks like uh, when it is dry. And then I am going to figure out how in the world to uh, go ahead and get the second butterfly wing on there. So the only thing I did was flip the stencil over. Now this side I am not going to worry about um, having as thick or as smooth as a line um, as I did on the other side because this one over on the left is going to be covered up essentially. Um, now I am going to uh, go ahead and make a mess here and this doesn't even end up on my layout. So I don't clean off my stencil. I'm not being careful with it and I get a lot of seepage underneath. So you can see like, ugh, like why didn't I take care of my, and, and I know that there's seepage underneath and do I take the time to clean off the stencil and put it down on another sheet of paper? No, I don't because that would have been the smart thing to do. So instead, I have decided that I am going to uh, do this with vellum. So I go ahead and I have a nice clean stencil now. I'm taking my embossing pad and I am embossing, I'm pouncing straight down on top of that stencil so that it goes through. And then I'm going to lift the stencil up and then you can see that it embossed really nicely. So I've got um, some of this beautiful sterling embossing powder here. And I go ahead and place that down and then I was like, whoops, knocked some of the embossing powder off. So I went ahead and dumped a little bit more on there. And now I'm just going to apply my uh, heat tool and look at that magic happen. Oh my word, you guys, embossing is so magical. It makes me so happy. Um, it makes me happy to do it. It makes me happy to watch it. It is just fantastic. So now I am going to go ahead and use that uh, negative of the, of the stencil and I am using the back side of my embossed area. I trace it with a pencil and now I'm going to grab my scissors and cut that out. So what this allows me to do is get a nice smooth cut. Um, and then when I erase my pencil mark from around this butterfly wing, I don't have to worry about erasing over top of the embossed area. I'm not going to mess with that whatsoever because my pencil is on the reverse side. Now to me, that makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. Uh, so hopefully it makes sense to you as well. Now I am fussy cutting this out. And you definitely want to move your paper and not your cutting hand. Uh, you'll want to do that as much as possible. That is what is going to give you the most smooth cut. So I go ahead and erase those pencil lines like I was talking about. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring my layout back. And then put this vellum piece over top of that second uh, wing right there. So it's a good thing that I only did a light light bit of the silver chroma silver chroma glaze uh, on that left hand wing. I'm going to take some pop foam and put these on the reverse side of my embossed uh, vellum here and that is just going to give me a little bit of lift off of the page. So when you're staring straight down it, at it like you are uh, from this camera view you don't really see the lift because again you're staring straight down at it uh, but you will see it um, when you're just looking at it uh, normally. So I grabbed a few little bits from my stash, some letter stickers and some labels. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a little title cluster right here over top of this gorgeous silvery butterfly. And I am using silver letter stickers to go ahead and coordinate with that gorgeous silver chroma glaze and the sterling embossing powder. So now that I have that down, I don't know, I've got to be all, you know, ni nice and, um, you know, putting all my, my stuff away. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so now I'm just going to create another little cluster with some labels and place it up here at the top. And then, of course, I'm going to do a little bit of journaling up there. Um, Oh, I went ahead and grabbed a brad from my stash as well 
Uh, now I'm going to poke a hole and place that brad right on through there. And then of course, there's also going to be washi tape on the back of this layout. That way my brad tines don't poke anything that I don't want them to poke. I write my just a quick little line of journaling about what this photo is. And then that is going to do it for this layout, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you again real soon for another video.